intelligence, some problems with the psychometric view of intelligence, or traditional ways of thinking with it. Fallacy of numbers. Beware of that. We think that just attaching a number to something makes it somehow more real. That's not the case. Some problems associated with IQ tests put forth by Robert Sternberg, one of the leading researchers and writers in the area of intelligence. First of all, IQ scores represent a very narrow range of thinking. Who decides what types of problems were to be on these intelligence tests? What type of thinking was important? These tests tend to rely on logical, deductive, or analytical thinking. They do not represent the variety of, of types of thinking used in real-life situations to solve problems or create products or performances. Narrow. The success on these tests are very dependent on vocabulary and exposure to concepts. You could have a high-functioning brain, but if this high-functioning brain has not been exposed to certain words and concepts or thinking strategies, your ability to score well is greatly diminished. Three, little predictive value. Little predictive value. Uh, it, the biggest predictor of these is your ability to do well on a similar test. There is some correlation to school grades or school-based performance, but there's little correlation to success in the real world. So in that sense, they have little predictive value. And for a problem, they do not measure creative or practical thinking abilities. The ability to generate ideas, creative, or to apply ideas in the real world, these are just as important or valued, maybe even more, uh, in achieving most types of success than just this analytical type of thinking. Complete this sentence. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to insert whatever task there. Now this is a not very accurate sentence because it assumes that rocket scientists are somehow more intelligent than other types of scientists. Rocket science takes rocket science sorts of thinking just as teaching second grade takes a certain kind of thinking, just like figuring out where to set up your deer hunting stand takes another type of thinking. They're all problems to be solved. Each area, each field, each domain, each type of problem uses and values a different type of thinking. So this idea of an expanded view of intelligence, and there are a whole plethora of extended views of intelligence. It says that intelligence is not a one-dimensional entity found on a straight line continuum. You are not more or less intelligent. Rather, you are intelligent in different ways. There's no single entity that we can really call intelligence. Intelligence is the ability to solve problems as the type of problem changes, the type of thinking needed to solve that changes. So people are not more or less intelligent in as much as they are intelligent in different ways. All right, this has looked at some problems with the psychometric view of intelligence.